Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited and wouldn't you know it, it's a, another day out in the glorious English countryside playing with armoured cable with a landscaper, although at least this one uh, has left us to do the electrics. The trouble is we've got an armoured cable here, um, it's just a bit too short to uh, go into the ground, uh, so we need to put a, an extension of about a metre or so on it. Isn't that always the way? How bloody typical is that? Anyway, uh, enough of my moans. We're going to do something slightly uh, different today uh, than we did in the last video where I used a whisker um, re-enterable splice kit to splice our SWA, which is a, a temporary way of splicing SWA. That last job I was on um, was a, a temporary fix. This one's going to be a bit more permanent. So what I've got is a resin joint kit. And uh, seeing as the whisker video brought up so many questions, I thought I'd, uh, I may as well show you the resin joint uh, in action out on site here. So uh, this is a lot more fiddly, this sort of kit, but uh, it's considered maintenance three. Although they, uh, this one does have screw terminals, by the time the resin is poured in and set hard, they ain't ever going to be undone again. Okay, let's get this done. This is a low power circuit. Uh, it's going to a box that's providing uh, LED lighting for the garden. We'll have a look at that later as well. So it's only a 2.5 cable, it's on a 16 amp breaker. It's not a very long run. Uh, looking at it, I don't know, 10 meters or so maybe, but uh, like I said, we're just a meter short for it to be uh, buried properly. Now I'm going to trim the ends here using a CK armor slice. But of course, a saw is an equally valid way of doing it. I've had the CK for years though, and uh, well, does the job. Perhaps a bit less fiddly than a saw, arguably. You just give it a few twizzles. At least the tension a bit. And uh, now I just want to take a slice. out of the rubber, or the PVC rather. Okay. Squeaky squeaky. Where's my knife? I haven't got my knife out yet. Okay, jolly good. There's one end. Let's just score that. And there we are. That's one end fairly well prepped. second end just needs sort of chopping or sawing down. It's a fairly thin armour, I'm going to see if I can get my, my chopper around it. <sighs> yeah, just too lazy to saw it. I'm not supposed to cut SWA with that, but uh, well, you've got to do, go with what works, don't you? So I'll just prepare this end in the same way. Here's my two ends. Uh, cables are of two different colours. We've got brown, black, grey meets brown, green, yellow, blue, uh, which is fine. Now I'm not even going to bother um, colour coding these. I'm just going to make sure they're in the right place because once this is done, these won't be accessible anymore. So there's not a lot of point me uh, over sleeving them here. Uh, but next, let's go into the, the packet here. Just use the, the sandpaper just to clean up our SWA strands. That one's all right, but this one's just looking a bit fruity. 
Okay, right, I'm tired of the SWA. You know, my battery is running low on the camcorder here, so uh, apologies if I'm being a bit succinct on this one. But um, as you can see, I've connected up the, uh, the wires when it's all within the footprint of the outer case. I wouldn't ordinarily use screw connectors on a what I consider to be a maintenance-free junction. I suppose this probably doesn't come under BS5733, but it still comes under the uh, the regulation on the screen now, whose name I forget, but I will look it up before I post this video, uh, which uh, says that it's fine to have connections in an enclosure that's made for the job, which this is, because again, once that resin uh, pours into every nook and cranny within here and sets hard, these screws are never going to come undone again, undone again and the only way to get back into this thing is probably going to be to saw the ends off and to redo it afresh so before we pour the resin in we've got to make sure that everything is where it needs to be right now some people were asking in the previous video how the armors are joined together incidentally i could have used crimps as well it also comes with crimps i'm not a great fan of crimps sometimes something looks and feels fairly well crimped but then you find it's it's not particularly so i'm going to use the screw connectors rather than the crimps uh, but like i say uh, it's once the resin's got in everywhere it should be perfectly fine what we have here are some constant force spring clips and some braid and the braid is going to sit between the two armoured so i'm going to start putting the spring clip on at one end and find the end There we go, and the spring unravels around there and just keeps that in constant contact with the braid, or the braid with the sheath. Same on the other side. The one that came in the whisker box had a bit of insulation over the, the braid, but this one's open. Doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut off the excess there. Lovely. And obviously, as I was saying before, before we go pouring the resin, we need to make do our testing and make sh damn sure that it's it's all okay now. This is all going to fit in here rather nicely and clamp shut but if it were a larger diameter of SWA you might have to saw off some of the end, end pieces so that the cable can fit within the housing. Right, nearly there, it's all tested, it's all wired correctly and I've used the tape that comes with just to seal the, the ends of the capsule. Now it's time to, to mix this horrible muck, which uh, is pretty dangerous stuff apparently. I saw one of these ones that says uh, can risk of causing cancer or something, so well there you go. I hope people appreciate the, the dangers I'm putting myself through to uh, get their garden lights working. I'm trying to open this. This comes in two parts and separated by a plastic spacer. And it's when the two parts are mixed. But there's no turning back. Alright, so the plastic spacer off. So now apparently I have to mix it around in the packet for three minutes. And that's uh, never much fun. Three minutes feels like a long time when you gripping something and shaking this around, it makes your wrist tired. Shouldn't do it, but plenty of practice in other ways. I've got these plastic gloves on, it comes with disposable plastic gloves as well, you don't want to get any of this on your skin. Time to pour, whoops, getting it all over the shop already. Obviously you have to make sure this is on fairly level ground. Sure there's no air bubbles in there and that it all gets into all the nooks and crannies. Right, 
so it's not to move it for about an hour while it cures I'm not going to be here that long I'm afraid so uh, I won't be able to show it you cured but take it from me it'll be rock hard well none of that's ever going to see the light of day again not showing this at the best angle sorry about that the camera's kind of in my way a bit here so it's making it a bit awkward for me to actually do this in a clean way but you can see from the clear plastic casing that we are we are full it's got in everywhere it's level enough it's not leaking out the sides Use up pretty much all that's in the packet. And that's that. So, compared to that shark thing last week, a lot more components involved, a lot fiddlier, a lot filthier, but uh, something that you can, once it's hardened, you can safely bury the shark less so as i said on the video last week i consider that more a temporary solution which is strange it's a bit of a misnomer because it's obviously a product that's designed to be buried so it's a bit weird there's a little lid to go on there as well but anyway while we're here there's a little chat about 12 volt garden lighting eventually when the power school connected up uh, this is going to be powering an led driver um, back over the way there which comes out to a bunch of spike lights around this pond and uh, I wanted to have a closer look at these because uh, most spike lights are uh, GU10 which means that uh, you have to run some armoured cable to near a connection point and then you've got the, the flex going off to, uh, to wherever that connection point is which means you end up with a situation like this where the, the flex is disappearing into the ground it's armoured up to a point and then it's not and I think that's uh, not very clever particular personally not the way I like to do it uh, now so these these are all cell these are 12 volts what we've got is uh, coming from the, the power point which is all the way over there we've got an arctic flex buried under the ground uh, so that's the output of the LED driver it's all 12 volts it's a 30 watt driver there are eight lights out here 3.5 watts per light uh, and the lamps I'm using as an example are these I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, Sebson MR16s. And I, um, I mentioned uh, on the last video that I prefer to do uh, self garden lighting, and one commentard came back saying that it was 12 volt lighting was in the dark ages. So I don't recall any dark ages where we were using 12 volt self, but um, I don't quite understand uh, what he was getting at with that because the advantage of this, obviously, we've got the, the cable disappearing to the ground, but. Um, if uh, this is how the landscape has done it we had the cables were all above the ground when i was last here but if someone comes along and sticks a spade through it or if water gets into the housing here there's no shock risk it's not going to trip anything at worst it'll short out the led driver which is short circuit protected anyway and we've just then got to pull this up until we find where it uh, splices in it's a shame that he's buried that actually because what it goes into is uh, an ip uh, t piece all the way around to the end point which then goes into a uh, IP straight through piece. What, I, what I'll do, I'll put a links in the description to where all these came from because this this stuff, none of this is from the wholesalers actually. This stuff this is all from Amazon, um, which uh, is not necessarily a good thing because Amazon seems to be taken over the world. But what can you do if you go to the wholesalers or whatever? They're all, all they want to sell is GU10 lights. Uh, these are MR16s, fit them in lots of places. They're very good. And you've got to remember that uh, in these days of LED technology. The, the LED chipset itself, the bit that actually lights up, uh, it's probably all the same stuff, whether it's a GU10 at 230 volts or an MR16 at 12 volts, it's just the circuitry inside that changes. Obviously the GU10 needs to convert the AC to DC if it's a decent, uh, sorry, the, needs to rectify the AC if it's a, a decent light and uh, drop the voltage down. 
uh, whereas when it's 12 volts, uh, yeah, they don't need quite so many components. But the, the light output is the same, and this is this is 280 lumen, so you know it's good light output, uh, and it's um, it's nice and bright. It's a warm white, uh, and it just does the job. So uh, I don't see the point of running 230 volt lights like these anywhere. Um, you can, if you do have 230 volt versions of these and you've got enough space inside, what I have done before as well is to use a converter, a little uh, GU10 to MR16 converter. It doesn't convert the voltage of course, it's just a conversion of the presentation of the lamp. So it converts the, the two pins of a GU10 lamp uh, into the two uh, prongs that a MR16 will take and that allows you to convert the fitting from a 230 volt fitting to a 12 volt fitting but um, but where you have a situation like this where you've got your cables disappearing off because that's the, how the landscape has installed it or because or even if, they're, even if they're trailing on the surface around the flower beds I still think it's a crap idea uh, because of the risk that someone's going to chop into them so uh, yeah I don't see any need for 230 volt lighting in most places and you can see over here the landscape has actually left a bit of the arctic flex poking out the ground so it's a nice contrast colour uh, again 12 volt it's not a mains cable it's a mains grade cable it's 2.5 mil arctic flex but it's only carrying 12 volts here and the reason he's left a bit of a loop here is because they might want to put some lighting along the pergola going along here uh, but again what we'll do if that ever happens is we'll, we'll bring it out uh, and the lighting we'll put here will be 12 volts again they might they, they may buy 230 volt lights but we'll convert them to 12 volt self uh, using uh, presentation converters or whatever we need to use to um, to get them to work it's a shame i can't show these on today but what the hell it's raining and my battery's running out um, this will be operated from a remote switch eventually i buy these remote switches which are quite good again they're from amazon and uh, they'll be able to flick these on from the house whenever they fancy without having to come out into the rain uh, and it should all work rather well hello puss go back inside if I were you meanwhile I suppose I'd better find the landscaper and find out how he expects them to uh, mow that turf around my 12 volt flexes